Luke, I am your father. <laughs> Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Macro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. And now, your hosts. Hello and welcome to Meet the Pressers. I'm Matt Mallory and my esteemed co-host, Clint Macro. How you doing, brother? We have a very special guest today, Kelly Ann Pigeon. She's a kind of a neighbor. She's a few miles away, I think probably about 45 minutes door to door from here to her house in Indiana, Pennsylvania. Uh, Kelly's uh, the owner of Armed and Feminine. She's been a content provider, a creator, and instructor, educator for many years. Uh, she designs holsters. She's, uh, a, she's the voice of freedom, speaking for women here in the Commonwealth and across the country. And uh, I'm very honored to have you on our show, Kelly. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Clay. Thanks, Matt. This episode of Meet the Pressers is made possible with the generous support of the law of self com, Nikon, Shooter Technology Group, ASP, Saber Red, The Safer, Faster Defense Responder 2.0, and Lee Armory. Thank you. DC Rally. That's where I seen you last. Yeah. Great that was, day. That was great fun. Yeah. It was a good time. I'm um, glad the weather held out too. Yes. It was a beautiful day. And, um, you know, it was amazing to me to just see so many patriots together in the same in the same area, um, getting along, sharing the message. You know, when I came to the firearms community over many years ago, five, six, um, I really just found so many genuine, honest and compassionate people, um, which is hard to find anymore. But what I found is just everyone in the gun community is, is just that. And uh, it was really nice to see everybody together, putting their differences aside. Cause, you know, everyone doesn't see eye to eye on everything. Sure. Um, but, you know, that main message of preserving freedom in 2A was just loud and clear. And everyone, you know, binding together was just awesome. That's what America's about. That's true. That's true. We don't all have to see eye to eye on everything. But right. the one thing that, uh, that we definitely need to see eye to eye on is First and Second Amendments, right? For sure. And 14. <laughs> You know, I and think and others, but they're all, all those are important. All are important. So Kelly, you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of your girls, you call them, right? A lot of people that come and, and train with you. You're one of the people that I recognized last year at the Trigger Pressers Union annual uh, instructor conference. You're one of the most active educators that I have the pleasure of working with. What's your secret? How do you fill so many seats with butts? <laughs> Well, I don't know that there is a secret more so than I make something available that people want, mm. um, you know, especially women. And, you know, I don't want to re-echo Beth's interview that she had with you um, not long ago. Um, but this is something that women want and women want to have training. Um, you know, I, I'm doing a, a lecture tomorrow over at the university uh, about women and guns. And uh, when I was doing some of that research, what I found is that women are more likely to take training than men are. Um, you know, women want to be safe. Women definitely want to be safe. Safety is their biggest, uh, you know, top criteria, criterion um, when they're shopping for guns or want to get into this. And so I make that available to them. I know when I started training, which was not, not even that long ago, just, you know, maybe six years ago, um, I sought out all kind of trainers. I wanted to keep learning. I wanted to be academic about it. I wanted to know everything. I wanted to get better. And I know how great I felt after going through all that training that I wanted to provide that for other women. And pretty much all I needed to do was put it out there. And it was just not even really a carrot, but something that women were like, finally, there it is. I can go to it. And as women, you know, we love our men. And I do have some men who train with me on the line. Um, women like to train with other women. They don't want to feel intimidated. They don't want to look stupid in front of other guys. They want to ask anything they want to ask. It just provides them a better environment to be just that. Um, no question is stupid. I always say we're not playing with Barbies here. We're playing with guns. So whatever you want to ask, get it out there. So it gives them, nice. you know, a really 
nice environment that they don't have to feel intimidated in to go. And so, you know, if you build it, they will come. I hate to say that it's sort of sounds cliche, but that's just sort of how it happened. And then it took on, you know, its own life. And, you know, I hire a photographer to come to all of my classes. And um, so I have a lot of pictures and you know wow. what? Pictures sell, pictures mm-hmm. sell, yes, pictures sell. And it's not really, it's not really about money, but it's about getting more people out and understanding. Because what I always say is that, you know, we change hearts and minds one at a time, mm-hmm. or in my case, 10 at a time when we do a class. And then I just let them take that feeling and share it with everybody. So they take all of the photos and they share the crap out of them because they feel so awesome. They're empowered, right. they're energetic, mm-hmm. they're confident. Mm -hmm. And not just confident with the gun, but it gives them confidence in every other aspect of their lives. Like, if I can master this gun, I can do anything. And so then it just goes to the next person and to the next person. And so that's how we've been able to fill up. Um, Last year was a little bit slower than usual. um, But the previous years were just waiting lists for pretty much every single class, which is great. You know, we want to be able to get as many people in who want to get in Mm -hmm. um, because one by one by one, ultimately that's how I save the second amendment from my little part of the world. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What other, uh, what organizations such as like the well-armed women girl with a gun in your area, which ones are the most uh, prevalent, the busiest ones? And are you, are you part of any of those? I am. um, I got started through the well-armed woman and that's how, um, where I got my first certification through there um, through NRA and I started up the first Well and Women chapter here um, one year after that. Um, I then became the state leader for the Well and Women, and I opened another chapter in Johnstown, and I opened another one in Warren, wow. um, PA. And there, um, there's one in Monongahela. We have one in Tioga, Lancaster, Tri-State, Madam Morris, up in the corner by New Jersey and New York. And let me think of another one. We did have to close North Huntington. So we have um, eight chapters now in uh, Pennsylvania of Well-Armed Woman. Wow, that's here. great. I'm also the regional trainer for three states too. So, and I have UC, uh, USCCA training and I also have Mr. Pinkus's ICE training under my belt too. Mm-hmm. So, so we offer a lot of things here. So we sort of overlap. Like when people come to classes through Armed and Feminine, um, I tell them to continue to train because, you know, use it or lose yep. it. And so I don't really try to steer them toward one or another. I just say, here's what's available in your area. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm friends with the, the women who've established a girl and gun. They are awesome folks too. If somebody lives somewhere closer to that, let them go to girl and a mm-hmm. gun. It doesn't matter to me as long as you're staying involved, as long as you're continuing to practice, mm-hmm. continuing to train, continuing to bring more people to to shooting sports that's what i'm about so wherever they are i'm going to find them a resource Mm -hmm. that's awesome what what led you up to to becoming an educator what were the steps in your life that led you to that because that happened later on in your adult life correct uh much later yeah um i didn't start any of this i didn't even really pick up a handgun until i was 45 years old (laughs) <laughs> so, I know. Nope, nobody will know. Nobody will know. <laughs> so, here I am encroaching very, very quickly onto my 53rd birthday. But, um, you know, I, it wasn't something that I really cared one way or another about. You know, I really I was an anti gun. I wasn't pro gun. You know, I mm-hmm. grew up with hunters in my family, most of whom were archers. You know, we did have a shotgun in the house, one. And that was about it. So I grew up with archery, but it wasn't a big deal. But I um, do a lot of volunteer work in my community for nonprofits. And one of the things that I had done was um, I was the vice chair of our disaster team here in um, the county. And so we worked very closely with emergency management and we did a lot of tabletop exercises, real time exercises, you name it. So I ran those. And sometimes we practice those 24 hours or through the night because you right. just never know when something will happen. Yep. And the sheriff was um, the sheriff was part of our team, and he said to me, "You know, Kelly, you're out all hours of the night. You need to get a gun to protect yourself." I'm like, mm-hmm. "Really? Like, you give me a state trooper? Like, I don't need that." And he said, "No, you come up to my office. You get your permit. We'll get you started." So I went up and I visited him, and um, I passed the background check, so I got my permit. And I really didn't do much with it after that. Um, and then I mentioned it to a friend of mine. I'm like, yeah, 
yeah, you know, I got my permit. Bob was talking to me. He's like, why don't you come out with us? We've got all kinds of guns. And so that was my introduction. My friends brought out an array of handguns for me to try. And first shot, fell in love, fell in love. Even okay. though now I know that they taught me some things incorrectly. That was okay. <laughs> um, so that was my introduction. And I just thought it was fantastic. And I just felt so powerful and confident. And um, that's when I just started to train more. And, you know, I hired a private trainer. I took more classes. And I just thought, I feel great. I need to share this with other women. And that's awesome. Then, Coincidentally, in 2015, I had um, received the Athena Award, prestigious Athena Award, um, part of which is about promoting the interests of women. And I thought, what better way to continue to promote the interests of women than to teach them how to defend themselves? Mm -hmm. So um, it just sort of fell together. Uh, you know, people say stuff happens for a reason. And mm -hmm. I think this mm -hmm. just kind of did. And here we are. Yeah, you've always been very charismatic and an excellent presenter. I think the first time I met you, you came down and took my Refuse to Be a Victim Instructor course, right. I think is when I first yeah. worked with you. Yeah. I think I worked with your husband before that. Correct. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you're an excellent, excellent speaker, and I'm very glad that you've been kind of on the speaker circuit now in this last year uh, with a lot of the pro, pro uh, liberty uh, rallies and things that have happened. Let's see, you were at Pittsburgh at the... Uh, yeah at the uh, protest rally after yep. the city of Pittsburgh passed their illegal ordinances, which mm -hmm. thankfully Judge James just knocked them down. We thank awesome. Firearms Owners Against Crime, Kim Stolfer and uh, Joshua Prince, Prince for that. Yeah, right. And see, you were at the Harrisburg rally right. this year. And right. then of course you spoke at the rally in Washington, DC, which is pretty fantastic. Yeah, and I actually got to speak in um, at the DC Project rally in DC also this oh, that's right. Summer. And you know, we just sort of have, my friend Lori comes with me each time she wasn't able to come to this past one that we had. Um, she says, have protests, we'll travel. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And and I enjoy that. I don't mind. You can put 10,000 people in front of me and I'm okay with that. Um, the idea is to get the message across from different types of profiles. You know, when we see a lot of this anti-gun legislation, most of these lawmakers have a profile in their mind. You know, dude, dude with a hoodie, full of tattoos, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's really not the case. And, you know, I always use the byline that gun ownership has no profile. You know, so with DC Project, which I love being involved with that, um, you know, we have so many different profiles, different colors, different shapes, different sizes, different, you know, um, we're nonpartisan. We have liberals there. We have conservatives. We have middle of the line people. It's everybody. And, you know, what really hit at home was when one of our teams met with a lawmaker, our legislative aide from California. Um, and that person said, wow, you don't look like gun people. Well, <laughs> what does a gun uh, person look like? Yeah, right. Yeah, what is it exactly? What does a gun person look like? And so when I get up, and especially in Pittsburgh, Clint, this one hit me home because John Shumway was there and he's friends with my husband because they work together at KDPA. Mm -hmm. He came by and spoke to me briefly. And then I took the podium and I'm like, well, here you are. And I'm not going to, this isn't gloating, but you know, I'm pretty well educated and I'm a woman and I'm Caucasian. And guess what? I didn't meet the profile that they wanted to interview later because I wasn't like a ranting crazy fool. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was talking about. I had a good message. I don't meet their criteria as crazy gun person. And so sometimes that gets passed over, but this is what's real. And our lawmakers need to see the real faces of gun ownership and understand the real reason why this is important to all of us. And I am more than happy to share that with anybody who's gonna listen. Hi, I'm Jeff Eisman with Centerpoint Safety Training and Protection from Bedford, Pennsylvania, and you're watching Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Macro. Meet the Pressers. This ah. is my favorite holster. Hey, and, and you designed that holster. That too. That. Yeah. <laughs> well, since we're showing. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, sure it's not easy. yours, but. Traitor. Traitor. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a big woman in terms of I'm kind of tall. You know, I'm just under 5'11", but there's not a lot to me. I'm kind of scrawny. And so um, carrying is kind of difficult for me because I don't have a lot of girth to hide things on. And so it was really important for me to find a holster that was very low profile that 
you know, I could quickly access when mm -hmm. needed to. And then anatomically for me, sorry guys, we'll get a little personal here. I have these hip bones that really stick out. And so I truly only have about this much space between my belly button and my hip bone where I can actually carry something uh, comfortably mm -hmm. and, and have access to it reasonably quickly. And so I have, and I have a video about this, like I'm not kidding. Now I have like three bags of holsters, just <laughs> like try, like not working, not working, not working. Um, so I just said, screw it. I'm going to make my own. And so I had on paper exactly what I wanted to have a very low profile, durable, um, with good retention, a nice tight X holster, um, that would fit women. And cause most companies pretty much the whole shrink it and pink it thing. You know, I've got my vetters, I've got my, we, the people's, I've got a little bit of everybody. Shrink and the pink. problem that they always have is that giant clip, like you just showed Matt, mm -hmm. that yep. giant clip is mounted in the center of yep. the holster. Well, I put that on with a belt and it looks like I got a tumor or a colostomy or, mm -hmm. or something else. And so, you know, I even put my belt to the side so they're not overlapping. Um, so the Shibumi company worked with me. I got hooked up with them through a mutual friend. He is a veteran. Um, nice. So, and also is my friend who hooked me up with them and he just sort of does that on the side. So um, he was able to duplicate exactly my design in my brain and on my paper. Um, so I was really grateful for that. And so, um, you know, it's out there. Um, we don't sell a whole ton of them, but the people who do get them love them mm -hmm. um, because of the low profile and durability and, and good retention of them. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm just happy that I finally got one that satisfies me. Well, I, I, a lot of men wear them. A lot of men order them too. Well, it's, it's that yeah. old statement, you know, necessary necessity breeds invention. Yeah. Well, yeah. There you, you need, go. You needed it. You made it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah, first but, saw it. I trained with your husband. He came down right. and we spent the day on the range. And he says, "Here, check this out." And he had the same gun that I did, so we cleared that gun out, and I put mine in it, and I carried it for a, for a little bit, and I really, really liked it. Like you said, the, the clips on most of them it causes just more bulge and more stuff right. there. Uh, this happened at the same time, well, not at the same time, but I did a class with Paul Huska. You know Paul? No, I don't know. Yeah. Well, anyhow, Paul, Paul and I was in a class, and we were doing an unarmed class, actually with Rob, and mm -hmm. Paul kind of jumped on top of me, and he's, he's straddling me. He says, he says you got some birthing hips. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, you. hey, you know what? Kelly's, Kelly's holster might work better for me. And I, I tell you, it's, I've got a closet full of holsters too. And this is definitely my favorite one. And I've, I've recommended it to many different people. Let's shift a little bit. We got to clear the air on the he Kelly and the she Kelly. So the original, the original Kelly pigeon. Oh, he, well, I guess he would be the original because that he's yeah. older. you, you adopted the name through marriage, right? So that. before that, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's hilarious because I just booked a vacation for us um, online and I immediately got an email back that said, um, you put the same name in twice and we can't book uh, airfare for you, really. It's impossible to get a dental bill paid to one checkup in <laughs> six months. Um, so, yeah, so we share the same first and last name, different middle names. Um, and so that creates a lot of confusion. A lot of people will send him a friend request who really meant it to be me because he had a picture of me and him and it just says Kelly Pigeon and it just screws many things up. It makes things easy too. I mean, I have one name on the mailing label, one name on the check that makes life <laughs> easy for us. That's um, funny. Yeah, we yeah. Can have that. You can have the same towel. The monogram is the same. Yeah, so for, for some of it, it's a little easier. It was difficult for my child when she was growing up, of course. But here we are almost 28 years later being married and uh, still wow. run into problems. Um, you know, he's a certified instructor as well um, mm -hmm. through NRA and USCCA. And mm -hmm. which made this kind of nice is, you know, um, husbands usually can't teach wives anything because we're not we're not willing to receive mm -hmm. from husbands like you know, doing home improvement projects, it's, it's usually a mess. But this, this sort of worked better because I got my instructor training credentials and then the next month he went to your class, Clint, mm -hmm. and got his. So we were able to grow through instructor training and gun knowledge and all of this together. So that's what made it work. So he co-teaches with me on almost every single class that I have, um, maybe except for a few. 
Um, and I've had to teach him in the girl philosophy. It took him a mm-hmm. while, you know, mm-hmm. because he worked with, with um, boys his whole life. Um, but he gets it now. He's, he's a whole lot better. And Paul Haynes was originally. So originally mm-hmm. we started with uh, those two in me. And actually now we've branched out in Armed and Feminine. We have now gotten five more women who are certified instructors. So there are awesome. most, times, most times on our line and we'll have 10 students and we'll have five female instructors on the line. So, uh, so it's pretty cool. Or we'll have four and Kelly. So he's to the other Kelly, male Kelly, uh, which was funny because one of the students said to me one time by the end of the course, she said, you know, I didn't really pick up. That was his name. I thought you were just referring to yourself in third person. <laughs> <laughs> No, not third person. The other, the original Kelly Pigeon. A lot of people don't know that Kelly, he Kelly, is actually the voice on our intro. Yep. Yeah, he's just silly voice. Yeah, a lot of some people think that's me, and and although I have done voice, uh, that that's Kelly. And I, I when we first came up with the idea for the show, I thought I want a professional to do our intro. So I got in touch with him, and he was uh, very kind enough to do that for us. So when you hear. Meet the pressers. That's actually him. That's Kelly. It is, and and he's got uh, he's got uh, voice credit on IMDb for doing so. Yeah, we. He's actually he's the voice of DC Project too. So okay. he gets he gets voluntold to do, a lot, <laughs> yeah, to do a lot of things because he has those talents. And um, so we just really tried to start our YouTube channel for the DC Project. I thought we really need to build this so if we yeah. can get good content on and get subscribers because we're really going to be about fundraising a lot mm-hmm. in this coming year right. um that hopefully that would be a nice way for fundraiser or you know people to say oh these girls have a following yeah we, we can put some money in there so he gets volunteered to produce all so he's the voice of several of those videos he produces them all for us um Muller will diana Muller will text me now she's coming on later she'll text me and say hey i'm going to be on fox at 6 20 a.m i'm like I'll kick him out of bed. Okay. And so he gets up, he records it, he produces it in like no time. He's like, wow. you know, just one of those things that you can do fairly quickly and boom, he's got it up on the channel in, in a matter of under an hour or so. Um, so he, he likes to contribute, likes to be one of the girls. <laughs> Hi, I'm Reverend Ken Blanchard, also known as the black man with a gun. And you're listening and watching Meet the Pressers with Matt and Clint. Meet the Pressers. Matt, why don't you tell, inform Kelly about our new initiative? So, like, we don't have enough going enough on. Enough going on, I know. He's, wait, he's, wait, wait, wait. Am I going to get voluntold about something? No, but it, no. you certainly can spread the gospel about Most this. Most definitely. Oh, okay. I'd love, love to have you. So, I, in June, I, I went down to D.C. Or down to D.C. I went down to Albany and met with uh, about six or seven politicians, political offices, mm-hmm. and talked to those writing the bills in New York State against guns. So there's a bunch of different bills they're coming out with, banning the 50 BMG, um, making it so that you have to take a five hour course that has a written test and a, and a live fire in order to get a pistol license. Uh, you have to have a hunting license in order to get a long gun. So there's a bunch of different taser. They're trying to uh, get rid of the taser out of the penal code to make it legal now, which is a good one. But I met with all these offices and when I got done and, and I, I was driving back from Albany, it just came to me that we should do something like the National Trainer Teacher Day, but on the political side of it and national educate a politician initiative. Yay. So that's Yay. What we've, we've come up with um, and we're moving forward. I'm putting that together and it's basically just going to be great. a call to action for instructors to get out and talk to your local state Yay. federal politicians and uh, kind of some talking points and, and ways to get your face in front of them to show them that, that the laws they're making, there's too, there's too many politicians that are not educated. Okay. And, oh, without question. We always said that every politician should take like at least a, a right. firearms course. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, part of the DC project every year, what we do make available to either the aides or to the lawmakers mm-hmm. is to come to range day. Nice. So we'll, we'll do our meetings all during the week. And then that Saturday have a range day for whoever wants to come out totally free. Listen, you could have Diana Muller, Lanny Barnes, Gabby Franco, Amy Dillon, me, Lori Black. Well, you can have anybody teach you these mass big name people who are experts mm. train you for free come on out and so few so take few, up on a few ever yeah. take us up on yeah. on that that um idea but um you just got to keep working it just got to mm, keep right. working it like i said one at a time one at a time one at a time um and you, you know one one thing that i've been making a point to 
to my lawmakers here locally. Luckily, I have their ears. Um, when when you impose those kind of training requirements on people, they're really discriminatory. And I know Clint, I have posted this for you several times. It's discriminatory against the poor. It's discriminatory against people who don't drive. Mm -hmm. um, even though all of us as trainers and instructors really support training, we really mm -hmm. do. But from a liberty standpoint, you know, somebody may only be able to afford just enough ammunition and a gun to keep themselves safe. And so now we want them to go and pay $200 for yep. a course and drive somewhere and maybe wait three months. So if, if training were mandatory, well, guess what? It has to yeah. be free. It's right. got to be free. It's got to be immediate with no waiting period. It's got to be available to people who don't drive. Other than that, it's going to be discriminatory in all right. of those ways. And they don't recognize that. They don't recognize that in any way. So um, we've got to just, I don't want to say keep the pressure on because that's not really how you get through to these people. You get through to them by playing nice. Yep. You know, like I always try to find um, a common, common area, common ground, ground of interest. We start there and we just say, hey, look, here it is. Because being antagonistic is going to turn them off yeah. and, and they're not going to want to meet with you. Um, they're not going to let their legislative aides meet with you. So it's really about, and I hate using that adage, having the conversation because it gets overutilized, but it is. We, we need to talk and, and find where we agree and understand where we don't agree and how do we bridge that disagreement so that it satisfies everybody. That's the hard part. Yeah, that, that actually was uh, was one of the things that when I met went down there and met with them, they, they were looking at what my background was mm -hmm. all the stuff that I did before they even, it took them a while to get back to me to actually mm -hmm. confirm the date and time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I know that that's what I, the first person I met with, I sat down and she's, she's just like, yeah, we, we vetted you. I was check, like, check well, I, yeah, right. Right. I appreciate you meeting with me. I know you're not, I'm not one of your con constituents and yep, we vetted you. You're good. And, you know, and they had a couple people in the room too. Right. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of like, they, they're not going to meet with you if you're totally off the wall and you know, we believe in what we believe in. We will not comply. Right. But then right. on the flip side of that too, we also have to be civil when we're talking to them because right. they're already thinking that we're off the wall just because we don't think the way they think. Right. Well, well right. two things on that, you know, a lot of times people will be hesitant to speak to someone that isn't their legislator, but keep in mind, these legislators pass laws that affect all Pennsylvanians or all Americans or all New Yorkers, whatever the case. Yep. So you should feel free to speak to all of them. Of course, being active as a citizen, voting, uh, making sure that they understand that you vote for everything from president to dog catcher, that you're Definitely. a yeah. voter will, will get their attention a little faster. Yep. But I charge people too, hey, you know, there are anti-gun politicians, people that are running on anti-gun platforms, and a lot of gun owners are hesitant to speak to those folks. Mm -hmm. But I say, sit down and talk to them. Okay. A, you're not going to make them any more anti-gun, right? Yeah. So it's only a net positive. But B, you can get an idea of what their talking points are, because a lot of times these anti-gun people, as uneducated as they are, once you get them off of their script, boom, they're done. Right. They don't know where to go. So yeah. if you talk to them, learn their script, learn their talking points, so that, that will give you the ammunition you need when you do have that conversation in a public environment. And you're not gonna necessarily sway them, but that those two people over there listening, those are the people that we need to sway. Right, right, and the people in the middle, you know, we always say that is like, we've already got our side, and those who are way far, we're never gonna get them. Right. But we can get these folks, and there are tons of them, mm -hmm. who are in the middle. Those are yep. the ones we need to get, and we need to get them with um, thoughtful conversation with facts like mm -hmm. you know, I always like to say don't let the facts you know ruin your argument right. but because there's so much bad data that's out there tons of yep. bad data and they believe it and terminology which is horrible they think mm -hmm. semi-automatic just means a big ugly black rifle right you know, yeah. police, bad terminology, semi you know and and to hold ourselves out as resources as well and I know we yeah. I do that for my politicians say look if you don't understand Call me. I'm more than happy to just interpret it for you or right. to point you in a direction where you can get good resources. So, um, but I'm not afraid to go into somebody who's not in my jurisdiction. Um, I've done that. I went to Connor Lamb's office. You know, I made nice, nice with the boy up front. We had people in common that we knew, got right in and had a great conversation because he's sort of left leans, but he's kind of in the middle. He was a mm -hmm. Marine and, and it turned out to be an amazing conversation. And so you don't know unless you try. Right. Um, so many of them won't see if they're in your district, but 
you should at least try. I actually got a response from Governor or um, from Senator Casey one time. It was hilarious. Actually, really? it was like typed this long. If you can see my fingers, like wow. super long. Because I said, you know, um, I, I want you to vote against da, 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 and here's why. And he actually wrote back and said, thanks. But here's why I'm not going to do that. And so yeah, I've, I've got a lot into, of those from Casey. Yeah, yeah, he went into his explanation that was, you know, 700 words long. And I'm wow. like, so he's trying to explain back to me why he's not going to. I'm like, oh, this is going to get if you, good. This if, is you take that, good. <laughs> if you take that letter and hold it up to the light, you'll see certain <laughs> letters will be, will be darker. And it'll say, your opinion doesn't effing matter, is what it says. <laughs> Epstein didn't kill himself, is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, nice. Oh, that is good. That is hilarious. Awesome. Well, it's been it's been awesome. It's been good having you on. I really uh, right. this was really fun. I enjoyed the kind of the uh, chat, guys. Definitely. So, well, you're welcome on any time, any time. What's the best way people can get a hold of you to follow you, stalk you? Well, probably not stalk you, but uh, catch up with you. Stalk, um, um, well, if they want uh, any information, they can hit the contact us button on the um, website armedandfeminine.com. Okay. Um, certainly, we have a YouTube channel as well, Armed and Feminine. We have a um, which the old man is the volunteer producer of all of that as well. <laughs> and um, uh, we are on Instagram. I'm trying to get that going. And I have a really um, active public Facebook page. We're like encroaching on 9,000 there. Very active. Nice. People. That's great. Well, I give things away every time we hit more 500 people. So they try to win things from me. Um, so it's just Armed and Feminine LLC on Facebook too. So you can always interact with us any way, shape, and form. Happy to have you. And I'll be working with you in March. You're hosting me for an NRA shotgun instructor class, right? Shotgun. I'm ready. Yeah. So that's in March. If anyone wants to come to Indiana, Pennsylvania, it's a beautiful range at Indiana County Bow and Rifle Club. My new range, my new training range. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so that'll be in March. It'll be good to work with you again. And I'm sure I'll see you before then. I'm going to have the Trigger Pressers Union, the second annual instructor conference. You're going to make it? And I'm coming to help you on Black Friday. Yes, you are. You're coming to help me with that class, right? Absolutely. So we'll yeah. be seeing a lot of each other. Yay! A lot of voluntold going on here. A lot of <laughs> Well, it's Clancy. It's hard to say no to. Yeah, True. I appreciate True. it. I appreciate all the help and all the things you've been doing for all of us here in the Commonwealth. Keep up the good work. Ditto. Bye, guys. Bye. This episode of Meet the Pressers is made possible with the generous support of the law of selfdefense.com, Nikon, Shooter Technology Group, ASP, Saber Red, the Safer Faster Defense Responder 2.0, and Lee Armory. Thank you. Thanks for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, and click that little bell so you know when we're going to upload new videos. So until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers.